everybody, Big Mess Tuck a CG Fly Shop. Here today, I'm going to show you how to tie a very effective small nymph called the Zebra Midge. One thing I want you to understand about the Zebra Midge is that it does not have to be tied in black all the time. I would encourage you to use other colors such as red, purple, olive, as well as black for your choices of colors to really vary the presentation of this particular nymph. It's a great pattern year round. Once again, you could change your sizes. Here in the vise today, I actually have a size 16. This is an Umqua, it's a U625BL um, in a size 16. And I'm showing it to you in a 16, and you can fish it in a 16 actually, and it won't, won't hurt at all because of the image quality there for you made it up with this. I do have a tungsten bead and I do recommend a tungsten bead um, if you can acquire them non-slotted, but this is a uh, 2.4 millimeter or in um, standard terms, it's a 330 seconds. Always match the size of your bead to the fly that you're tying there. So let's get started. So I've already got the hook and the bead in the vise and I have it elevated up here in my jaws a little bit. I wanna take my thread, which is black. We're gonna start laying our thread down here. I got these nice wraps. I'm going to show you a little trick here. By holding this longer tag end up, I want to counterclockwise wrap that and let it unwind. And by holding this up at an angle, it's allowing me to get a very, very nice body on this particular fly. If you can see right there, just like so. Okay? Real simple. Just like that. Okay? It's something you can do in any fly you're tying, whether it's an imp, it's a dry fly. It's going to give you those touching side-by-side -side wraps because we've basically created a ramp for your thread to slide down on to that particular point there. And it's just something that's really cool. Other than that too, we've really locked this thread in as well. So at this point, I want to take my scissors and I want to trim that off. The next material we have to use on this is going to be some wire. In this case, I'm going to use some silver wire, as we see here. And I'm going to tie it in on my side of the hook but I'm gonna lay the silver wire back here at our stopping point. And this is where our body, the back of our body is gonna start. I wanna make those touching wraps. I'm coming forward and I wanna secure that to the hook shank. And if you can notice, I'm going to unwrap that again. And you can see that laying flat. I'm capturing that, okay? Nice and smooth. And you hear me talk about thread manipulation. And when I sit down with folks, and we do some fly tying lessons here in the shop. As I, this is one of the things that we do at first, before we even jump into tying the fly, is your thread manipulation. Now I'm gonna look back at this here momentarily. I'm gonna look at this body as I come up. I'm not trying to build my body taper quite yet, but I'm just trying to get those nice flat thread wraps as much as possible. It's not gonna be perfect 100%. Let's unwind a few of those there actually the anal coming out in me. This fly works great. You can use it as a two nymph setup if you would like. You can do it as a uh, dry dropper. And, and even in the summer months, I really like this, um, especially in the national park, throw in some 16s down to 20s in little midge patterns like this. They're super easy. And what will happen in some cases um, is when you go to to lift up your fly to recast a lot of times on these smaller flies you'll have a wild you know a native wild fish on that particular fly that you didn't even know and they're just basically just sucking in those little little midge flies there is what they're doing so at this point here we're just going to start building our body up per se at a little bit of a taper not we don't need a whole lot here we're not we're not going crazy with it. It's it's a zebra midge. It's pretty it's pretty small. Let's get past this here. I'm gonna continue to kind of wrap back over as you can see there. Wrap around this a little bit more and kind of come back. This hook here kind of flattens out up top, which is actually a perfect hook too for a reaper midge, which I'll tie for you one day. I don't have the materials here to do that. It's a fly that I like to fish this time of year and even through the summer months, but it's a small dry fly. And it's easy to tie and people are so intimidated from tying dry, small dry flies that this hook here is perfect for that particular pattern. 
So as you can see right here, we've, we've really built this up per se. Let's just see where we're at. I want to rotate that vise, let that thread. I'm going to look here, get a little bit fatter on that side. Kind of assist it just a smidge. There we go. I like that. I can see it flattening out right there. Let me build that up right there just a little bit. And boom. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap our wire. And this is fewest materials you could have is a hook, a bead, wire, and thread. It, it's the basic. Can't get any easier than that. So I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to start wrapping, making open spiral wraps. Try to go as even as you can doesn't have to be perfect and boom I'm right there so I'm gonna bring my thread back over I'm gonna come around I'm gonna capture that wire just like so okay capture that wire boom, just like that I want to rotate this here so I can see it I want to come in here I want to make a wrap around that wire so basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my thread and going around that wire just like so and I'm securing it down. I'm locking it in place just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to helicopter this here just like that. Just like that. There we go. Now, if you want to get fancy, you could put a little bit of ice stub up here, a little bit of peacock earl. Very little. It's easy to overdub these flies. You could put a little bit of wing tuff coming off the back here if you would like with a little bit of, um, you could use some um, crystal flash. You could use a little bit of uh, poly yarn if you want to. I wouldn't use a whole lot, just a little bit, just to kind of show maybe like a little um, wing starting to come out there as well. You could also use a glass bead if you like. Um, sky's the limit, but it's very simple to tie. At this point here, it's, it's, it's unwound there for me flat. I want to put in a series of wet finishes here. This is also a fly if you wanted to really coat, coat the body with, uh, with some UV or something you can. See, I kind of pulled and broke that right there, but I got several of those in there. Nice clean break, as a matter of fact. So at this point here, that is the foundation for any zebra midge you would tie out there, regardless of the colors. I encourage you to give this fly a try, especially if you're a little intimidated on tying on smaller hooks. It's not that difficult to do, folks. It's real simple to do. What will aid you is putting a bead up here. It's going to give you an area where your thread and materials have to stop, which keeps the eye that hook clean. This is great fished in tandem with another small nymph under a dry as a dry dropper. Or you can fish two of these together if you'd like um, with some right conditions on some tungsten putty. If you folks have any questions, you can email us at info at tuckflyshop.com. You can also call the shop at 828-488-3333. Be sure to like and subscribe. We appreciate you folks doing that. Share the video if you would like to. Also, these materials should be available for you on flyshopusa.com. Folks, y'all take care, and we'll catch you next time.